Hello children, welcome to today's class. Today we are going to read part 2 of the chapter Fundamental Unit of Life. I am Basabda Tarath and this is chapter 5 of your class 9 science book. Children, the topics that we covered in part 1 were Discovery of Cell, Definition of Cell, Cell Theory, Shape, Size and Number of Cells, Types of Cells, basic structure of a cell and cell membrane and the topics that we are going to cover today are the structure and function of cell wall, nucleus, cytoplasm, all the important cell organelles like endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, mitochondria etc and at the end, we will understand the difference between plant cell and animal cell. So friends, let's start with cell wall. Cell wall is present in plant cells. It's not present in animal cells. We have learnt that in animal cells, the outermost covering is plasma membrane. But in plant cells, there is an extra covering outer to the plasma membrane and this is called cell wall it's an extra covering present in plant cell and it's present in fungal and bacterial cells also cell wall is present not only in plant cell but also in fungal and bacterial cells and this cell wall is dead it's not living because it's rigid it's fixed in structure it can it is not flexible neither it is selectively permeable like plasma membrane that's why we call it dead of which material cell wall is made up of it is made up of cellulose cellulose is a complex carbohydrate and this cell wall is freely permeable Freely permeable means it allows most substances to move across it. Unlike plasma membrane which is selectively permeable and which allows only selective substances to move across it, cell wall is freely permeable. It is not selectively permeable. Now what are the functions of cell wall? First function, cell wall provides mechanical support to cell. Can you say why cell wall is present in plant cells, it is not present in animal cells? You see, plants grow at a particular place and they cannot move from one place to another. Whereas animals can move from one place to another, they live in place of shelter, they can move to a place of shelter when the weather goes bad. But animals, uh, but unlike animals, plants have to withstand all kinds of bad weathers, all kinds of climatic conditions. So, they need some more support, they need extra mechanical support and cell wall provides this extra support. And cell wall allows materials to exchange. As I said, cell wall is freely permeable and it allows many materials to be exchanged between the cell and its surrounding. And cell wall maintains the shape of the cell, it is fixed in shape, it is rigid and it helps in maintaining the shape of the cell it keeps the shape of the cell fixed now let's start learning about a very important cell component that is nucleus you can see there is a prominent spherical structure present at the center of the cell this is nucleus nucleus is called the brain of the cell because it controls the activities of all the other components of the cell. It is the leader among all the organelles. It manages and controls the activities of all the organelles. That is why it is called the brain of the cell. And we will now see the structure of nucleus. Nucleus consists of four components basically. First is nuclear membrane. It is also called nuclear envelope, nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope, then nucleoplasm, nucleolus and chromatin material. So the nucleus is surrounded by a membrane, it is a double layered membrane. It is 
called nuclear membrane you can see there are many pores present in the nuclear membrane can you say why these pores are present what might be the function of these pores yes these pores help in exchanging material between the nucleus and its surroundings means exchanging the material between nucleus and cytoplasm so the nuclear pores are present for exchange of materials then nucleoplasm as you see the cell contents the fluid contents of the cell is called cytoplasm likewise the contents the fluid contents of the nucleus is called nucleoplasm its chemical composition is almost same to cytoplasm next we see a small spherical body present inside the nucleus it is not surrounded by any membrane it is called nucleolus this small spherical body is called nucleolus and its function is to synthesize ribosomes next comes the most important component inside the nucleus that is called chromatin material you can see some tangled mass of thread like structures inside the nucleus that is called chromatin material now these thread like structures take up definite shape when the cell is about to divide you know all the cells they keep dividing and forming new cells and at this time of cell division the chromatin material appears like this and then it is called chromosome when chromatin material takes up definite shape it is called chromosome so do you know of which material chromosome is made up of chromosome is made up of dna molecule and protein and chromosome contains genes it carries genes you might have some idea about genes gene is the basis of heredity it is called the unit of heredity genes are units of heredity they carry traits from parents to the offsprings and chromosomes carry genes there are several genes on a chromosome now see what are the functions of nucleus as i said nucleus controls all the metabolic activities of the cell with the help of chromatin material or chromosomes then nucleus regulates the cell cycle what is cell cycle as i said cells keep dividing and forming new cells and this is called cell cycle and nucleus controls cell cycle and it is concerned with the transmission of hereditary traits from parents to offsprings nucleus carries chromosomes and chromosomes carry genes and genes are responsible for transmitting traits from parents to offspring this is how nucleus is concerned with the transmission of hereditary traits from the parents to offspring next come to cytoplasm cytoplasm is the fluid content of the cell it is transparent in color and it is jelly like actually cytoplasm contains about 80% of water then why it appears jelly like because it contains many insoluble waste products and also storage products like starch glycogen lipid etc so we will see the functions of cytoplasm cytoplasm holds the internal components of the cell it holds all the components of the cell in place and protects them from damage cytoplasm stores molecules that are used for all the cellular processes and then many cellular processes occur in cytoplasm and cytoplasm also helps the cell in retaining shape now let's start about cell organelles what are cell organelles you can see many components uh, are found suspended inside cytoplasm they are of different shapes and different structures and they perform specific functions each component performs specific function that's these components are called cell organelles all these components they are assigned specific functions to do and these are called cell organelles 
we will learn about all these cell organelles now and based on the presence or absence of membrane cell membranes are of three types without membrane there are organelles without membrane and example is ribosome and there are many organelles that are bound by a single membrane these are single membrane bound organelles and the examples are vacuoles lysosomes golgi apparatus endoplasmic reticulum etc and some organelles are bounded by double membrane the examples are mitochondria and plastids now let us see what are the basic difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell let me just uh, say that all the membrane bound organelles are not present in prokaryotic cells that we have studied in part 1 and i again repeat that all the membrane bound bound organelles are not present in prokaryotic cells so we will just point out the difference between prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell you see the prokaryotic cells are small in size they are 1 to 10 micrometer in size but eukaryotic cells are bigger in size and they are generally 5 to 100 micrometer in size then eukaryotic cells have well developed nucleus in eukaryotic cells nuclear region is well defined and surrounded by a nuclear membrane what about prokaryotic cells can you say in prokaryotic cells nuclear region is poorly defined and known as nucleoid it's poorly defined in prokaryotic cells and known as nucleoid then in prokaryotic cells a single chromosome is present but in eukaryotic cells more than one chromosome are present in prokaryotic cells membrane bound cell organelles are absent in eukaryotic cells the membrane bound cell organelles such as mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum plastids vacuoles etc are present now let us start with the organelle endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum is a large organelle in cytoplasm it consists of flattened sacs called cisterni and tube like structures called tubules endoplasmic reticulum is always present near the nucleus in fact it is, it is attached to the nuclear envelope it continues from nuclear envelope and its function is to synthesize package and transport substances in cell you see a part of endoplasmic reticulum that is the cisterni have some spherical dot like structures attached to their surfaces what are these tiny spherical structures these tiny sp spherical structures are ribosomes and because of the presence of these ribosomes this endoplasmic reticulum appears rough that's we that's why we call it rough endoplasmic reticulum or we shortly write it as rer rough endoplasmic reticulum but the tubules they do not have ribosomes attached to their surfaces that's why they do not appear rough and we call them smooth endoplasmic reticulum or ser you see the uh, the function of endoplasmic reticulum is to synthesize package and transport substances and rough endoplasmic reticulum have ribosomes attached to their surfaces so what they might be synthesizing they synthesize proteins because ribosomes are attached to their surfaces and ribosomes are sites of protein synthesis that's why rough endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes proteins and what about smooth endoplasmic reticulum they do not have ribosomes attached to their surfaces they synthesize lipids so rough endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes proteins and smooth endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes lipids we'll see the function of endoplasmic reticulum 
endoplasmic reticulum forms intracellular transport system as it forms a large uh, uh, membranous network inside the cytoplasm it forms intracellular transport system then ser or smooth endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes lipids we just discussed about it and rough endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes proteins membrane biogenesis what is membrane biogenesis membrane biogenesis means the synthesis of plasma membrane the formation of plasma membrane Pl you know plasma membrane is composed of proteins and lipids and from where do these lipids and proteins come they come from endoplasmic reticulum thus endoplasmic reticulum helps in membrane biogenesis then in liver cells smooth endoplasmic reticulum performs a very important function it helps in detoxification of harmful substances it helps in detoxification of poisons and drugs and keeping us safe now the next organelle in our list is golgi apparatus golgi apparatus is also known as golgi bodies or golgi complex it was discovered by camillo golgi in 1898 Camillo Golgi was a famous biologist from Italy and he discovered Golgi apparatus in 1898 as you can say Golgi apparatus has got its name from its discoverer that is Camillo Golgi this organelle consists of sac like flattened sac like flattened pouch like structures called cisterni and vesicles these sac like structures or cisterni they are always arranged parallel to each other they are arranged parallel to each other and golgi apparatus is always present next to endoplasmic reticulum as they both work together endoplasmic reticulum and golgi apparatus they work together and golgi apparatus contains flattened pouch like structures flattened sac like structures called cisterni and vesicles these cisterni are arranged parallel to each other Golgi apparatus is present next to endoplasmic reticulum because endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus they work together. Cisterni are usually four to eight in number in a Golgi apparatus, but scientists have even noted uh, a maximum of sixty number of cisterni in a Golgi apparatus. We will see the function of Golgi apparatus now. Golgi apparatus. stores modifies packages products and transports them to definite destinations that is why it is called post office of the cell it is called post office of the cell because it receives materials modifies them packages them and sends them to different locations so what does this golgi apparatus receive actually Golgi apparatus receives simple substances it receives lipids and proteins from endoplasmic reticulum it receives these molecules modifies them and turns them into functional forms and which can be used for different purposes and then packages them in vesicles and sends them to different locations of the cell what are these locations these locations are lysosomes plasma membrane cell wall and extracellular fluid then second point is golgi apparatus synthesizes lysosomes golgi apparatus helps in synthesis of lysosomes because lysosomes contain enzymes and they get their enzymes from golgi apparatus thus golgi apparatus helps in synthesis of lysosomes then in plant cells golgi apparatus helps in synthesis of cell wall the cell wall gets its material from golgi apparatus next we'll learn about lysosomes lysosomes appear globular or granular in shape they are small spherical sacs and surrounded by a single lipoprotein membrane lipoprotein membrane means the membrane is made up of lipid and protein and what does lysosome contain 
lysosome contains digestive enzymes. These digestive enzymes are capable of digesting almost all the organic materials. Now you just imagine what would happen if all the waste in our houses lie here and there and they are not disposed. How unhygienic, how unhealthy uh, and how messy the things will become. There must be a waste, waste disposal system in our house. Likewise, inside a cell a lot of waste is produced and this waste also needs to be managed. This, uh, this waste should be disposed from the cell. And who does this function? Yes, this function is carried by lysosomes. That's why lysosomes form the disposal system of the cell. They help in waste disposal. We'll see the function of lysosomes now. So what do lysosomes actually digest? They digest all the organic materials. So what are these materials that lysosomes digest? They digest harmful materials that enter into cell. Any foreign material that enters into cell is digested by lysosome. Even uh, if a bacterium or a virus enters into the cell, it is digested by the lysosomes. Then, digestion of dead organelles is also done by lysosomes. Lysosomes get attached to the organelle when it becomes dead. When an organelle becomes dead and is no more functional, it's damaged and it cannot function, then lysosome gets attached to it and digests the organelle. And if the cell is damaged, if the cell is damaged and it is unable to function properly, we, it, may also, uh, it may also affect the functioning of the adjoining cells. And this is the case when all the lysosomes, they burst out and release all their digestive enzymes and the entire cell is digested. That's why since lysosomes are capable of digesting the whole cell when it is damaged, these are called suicide bags. These are the suicide bags of the cell. The next organelle we are going to learn is mitochondria. Mitochondria perform very important function of the cell. You just imagine what would happen if there will be no power supply to your houses. How will all the appliances work? So you need electricity for a good life, for a smooth life. Without electricity, life will be almost impossible for us. And inside a cell also, energy is needed. Energy is needed by all the organelles to perform their functions. And who supplies this energy to the cell? Mitochondria. They perform this special function. They provide energy to the entire cell, to all the cell organelles. That's why they are called powerhouse of the cell. Now we will see the structure of mitochondria. Mitochondria are double membrane bound organelles that we have learnt just before. So these are surrounded by two membranes, an inner membrane and an outer membrane. You can see the outer membrane is smooth, but the inner membrane has many enfoldings. These foldings of inner membrane are called cristae. So why these foldings are present in inner membrane? Because they increase the surface area of the inner membrane which helps in uh, which helps in generating more number of atp molecules the larger the surface area the higher will be the number of atp molecules that are very useful molecules and you see the inner membrane membrane encloses a cavity that is filled with matrix it's a gel like uh, substance gel like fluid it is called matrix and what does this matrix contain this matrix contains ribosomes and circular DNA and respiratory enzymes. And we will see now the function of mitochondria. Mitochondria generate energy in the form of ATP. 
So, what is the need of uh, generating these ATP molecules? You see, the food that we take in provides us energy, but we cannot get energy from the food directly. This energy needs to be converted into some usable form and mitochondria do this function. They convert the energy in food to be converted into ATP and the full form of ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Energy is stored in ATP and is utilized by the cell organelles when it is needed. That's why this, these energy rich ATP molecules are called energy currency of the cell. These ATP molecules are called energy currency of the cell. These molecules break and provide energy whenever there is need. Mitochondria can synthesize their own proteins and they are self-duplicating units. You see mitochondria have their own ribosomes so they can synthesize their own proteins. And since they have their own DNA molecules, they can duplicate themselves also. That's why they are called semi-autonomous semi organelles. Since they can synthesize their own protein and they can duplicate themselves, they are called semi-autonomous organelles. Now come to plasters. Plasters are the organelles that are present only in plant cells. Remember, these are present only in plant cells and they are absent in animal cells. These are basically pigment containing organelles that provide color to different parts of a plant. There are basically three types of plasters. Chloroplasts, chromoplasts and leucoplasts. Now these chloroplasts are the plasters that contain green colored pigments. You can see the green leaves or soft green stems because of the presence of these chloroplasts. They contain these green pigments called chlorophyll. And chromoplasts. Chromoplasts are the types of plasters that contain colorful pigments. The colorful flowers that we see are because of the presence of this chromoplasts. Not only the colorful flowers, the beautiful colorful flowers and the many other parts of, of a plant which appear colorful sometimes are because of the presence of this chromoplasts. And then the third category of plasters is leucoplasts. These plasters do not contain any type of color pigment. They are concerned with storage of food. Then let's see the structure of a plastid. A plastid like a mitochondrion is also a double membrane bound organelle. It has two membranes. It is surrounded by two membranes. An uh, inner membrane and an outer membrane. Now, the inner membrane surrounds a cavity and that cavity is filled with a matrix that is called stroma. The uh, plastids are filled with this uh, fluid substance called stroma. And this stroma contains ribosomes and DNA like mitochondria. And inside the stroma you can see some cylindrical structures. These cylindrical structures are called grana. Singular form is granum, granum or grana and each granum consists of some disc shaped membranous structures that are called thylakoids. These thylakoids contain chlorophyll in chloroplasts. Now the last organelle we are going to read about is vacuoles. Vacuoles are basically storage sacs. They are storage sacs for the cell. They store both solid and liquid contents. So what do they store exactly? They may store waste products. They may store water. They may store food. And they may store nutrients. And there is difference between uh, vacuoles in plant cell and in animal cell. Look at the picture. In animal cell you can find many small vacuoles. You can find vacuoles in multiple number, but in plant cells only a single vacuole is present and that is very large in shape. In, plant, in a mature plant cell, the vacuole may be so large that it may occupy 50 to 90 percent of the cell's volume.
दैट्स वाई इन मैच्योर्ड प्लांट सेल न्यूक्लियस इज प्रेजेंट न्यूक्लियस इज पुश टूअर्ड द सेल वॉल सो यू सी द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन एनिमल सेल एंड प्लांट सेल इज दैट द नंबर ऑफ वैक्यूल्स इज मेनी इन एनिमल सेल्स एंड इट्स सिंगल इन ए मैच्योर्ड प्लांट सेल सो वाट आर द फंक्शंस ऑफ वैक्यूल many times vacuole simply fill up the space the sim vacuole means empty space actually many times vacuole simply fill up space there are sacs that simply fill up space and in plant cells they perform a very special function uh, depending on the availability of water vacuoles in plant cells may absorb water they, they may gain water or they may lose water and when they gain water to the highest extent they the cell increases in size and puts pressure on the cell wall this is called torgor when the cell increases uh, size because of the increase in size of the vacuoles it uh, puts pressure on the cell wall and that is called torgor and this torgor helps the plants in withstanding uh, adverse com um, adverse conditions adverse uh, climatic conditions then vacuoles can also have digestive functions like lysosomes we see they can store waste materials and they can also digest them and lastly vacuoles store nutrients so friends that we have uh, learned about uh, the all the important cell organelles we'll see the basic uh, difference between a plant cell and an animal cell we'll compare the structure of a plant cell and animal cell now so what are the similarities between a plant cell and animal cell we see the similarities are that both the type of cells have cell membrane both plant cell and animal cell have endoplasmic reticulum both the types of cells have mitochondria they have golgi bodies they have nucleus and they have ribosomes and we'll see then what are the difference in structures of plant cells and animal cells the differences are first is presence of cell wall cell wall is present only in plant cells and it is absent in animal cells it is the first difference between a plant cell and an animal cell second difference is presence of plastids plastids are present only in plant cells and they are absent in animal cells and the third difference is that in the presence of vacuole in a plant cell only a single large vacuole is present and in animal cells multiple number of vacuoles and small in size are present so friends with this we come to the end of this chapter we learned about the definition of the cell we learned about the structure of cell its organelles and we learned how cell is the structural and functional unit of life with this we come to the end of this chapter thank you friends